The entryway is a confusing part of the house. We don't spend much time there, yet it is one of the most visited areas in a home. It acts as a first impression and a welcome to our home. If you've been keeping up with our home makeover series, you'll know that we recently moved into a new home and have been slowly decorating it over the past few months. We firstly tackled our home office and design studio, which we fully documented in the first episode of this series. This video is a second installation where I'll be transforming our entryway. Stay tuned till the end to get a peek of what's to come. Our home has a decent sized entryway measuring 3 meters by 2.5 meters. Seeing as we had so much space, we wanted this area to be both a mudroom and an entryway. Plenty of storage space, a place to transition between the outside and inside. This meant we needed cupboards, benches, drawers, as well as other things that you typically find in entryways, like a drop zone for everyday carry and a mirror. At the moment, we have a makeshift space with an old console table that used to be in our apartment dining area. Our front door opens to the right, so it made the most sense to have the mudroom aspect on the left hand side of the entry, and then have a console table and mirror set up on the right hand side. We looked all over the internet for mudroom and entryway inspiration, and fell in love with many things that Studio McGee did in their Home on the Ranch project. We particularly liked the cabinetry details in this mudroom. I wanted to somewhat replicate what Studio McGee did with their cabinetry, but with IKEA storage units to save a bit of money. I chose Plaza units for the base as they are rated as a bench and did a custom configuration with 380cm benches spanning 240cm wide and a tall cupboard on top on the left hand side. I then added sunny dull doors to the fronts for a clean but traditional look. What is great about IKEA Plaza units is that they are super easy to build. They only took a couple of minutes to install and I didn't even need to use any tools. This saves a lot of the frustration that often comes with flat packs. The doors and drawers were slightly more tricky as I needed a screwdriver to install the hinges. But all in all, the process went quite smoothly. The plaza units on their own were quite plain, so we decided on placing a timber panel between the bench and tall unit to break up the design and add visual interest. For this, we used walnut veneer as we wanted something in a darker shade to contrast the rattan sheets we were planning to decorate the bench doors with. We placed a panel on top of the storage bench and screwed it in place from underneath. If you plan to do something similar to this, make sure you get the correct screw length. Ideally, you want the screw to end up somewhere in the middle of the panel. Once the panel was attached, I placed the tall cabinet on top, attached its interiors and doors, and screwed in the handles. We used a combination of short 128mm handles and long 192mm handles in polished brass to contrast with the matte surfaces of the units. If you're planning to do something like this yourself, I'd recommend using a drill template so you can get accurate alignment for your handles. They typically come in standard sizes, so having a template will save you hours of potential frustration. Before I continue, I wanted to quickly thank today's sponsor, Soltec. Soltec is a company that makes LED grow light that seamlessly blends functionality and design. I recently got my hands on the new growth LED, which goes perfectly under our kitchen cabinet to germinate seeds before it goes into a container outdoors. The light came in this very nice box with all the accessories included so you can set them up right away. Installation is very easy, as the brackets snap onto the light and you can just stick them onto any surface. Route the cables with the provided cable management, plug them in and you're ready to go. There's also a screw option if you want a more permanent installation. The light operates with a simple touch, quick double tap to turn on and off, or tap and hold to adjust the brightness. Really handy for plants with different light requirements. Soltech also has a handy plant guide so you can identify how to best care for your house plants. Best of all, they look great as an accent lighting as it emits a warm light and allows you to place live plants in places with zero natural light. Head over to the link in the description to learn more about Soltech Grove LED. We also really like how the bottom drawers of Studio McGee's mudroom had this detail, so we decided to DIY something similar. We purchased a sheet of lightweight raffia mat that we cut to size and attached with double-sided tape over the panels. These sheets are very lightweight so it is really easy to work with them. Unfortunately, some of the edges ended up looking a little rough as we didn't order enough of the mat, but overall, it still looked nice and elevated the look of the previously white and plain door panels. Something about the unit looked off, 
the top of the cabinet looked really flat which made the whole unit look like a flat pack furniture. I wanted to add crown molding but I didn't want anything too difficult to install which is why I went for IKEA bot bin molding that is actually meant for the bot bin cabinet from IKEA's kitchen line. Anyone who's installed crown molding before knows how difficult it is to get it perfect as walls are never completely flat. I tried my best with the tools I had, cut them on a 45 degree angle with a handsaw and miter box and applied blue masking tape on the face to prevent the finish from chipping. I then attached the molding on top of the cabinet with an L bracket that screws into the back of the molding and on top of the cabinet. It is definitely not high quality carpentry, but from afar it is passable and definitely elevates the look of the cabinet. To finish off the mudroom side, I added two solid oak IKEA Hovholm pack rails from our old apartment that can be used to hang hats or bags. Opposite the mudroom setup is where I plan to have a console and mirror. It took a really long time to find the right console as we were dwelling between quite a few options, but we ended up going with the sculptural one made from solid mango wood. This is the same type of wood that is used in our desk and sideboard, but with a slightly different finish. I really like mango wood as it is a highly sustainable material due to its cultivation as a fruit tree. It is also a really unique timber as every piece has a distinct grain pattern with curled streaks and is often multicolored from splatting, which is a form of discoloration. It took months of scouring the internet and visiting various antique shops to find the perfect mirror. We didn't want a standard round mirror and also were sold on the idea of buying a brand new mirror as they are so expensive. After searching for months on end, we found this beautiful century old French mirror on Facebook marketplace for a bargain price. It complements the console perfectly. When it comes to planning our makeovers, we always use a furnishing template that allows us to save items we come across online or offline, categorize them by room, check the status of our orders, and also keep track of how much we've spent. Everything is presented neatly in the dashboard, so we can make better decisions on what to purchase for our home. If you're moving into a new home or in the process of furnishing or renovating, I highly recommend you check this out. We finish off the entryway with items that we collected over time. On the side of the tall cabinet, we hung a gold frame original vintage painting that we bought in an antique shop in Fitzroy, Melbourne. We added a handmade cream terracotta vase with a branch display and an organically shaped handmade salad bowl that we repurposed into a catch-all tray for our keys and wallets. We found this beautiful timber chair for $8 from a thrift shop, which we use as an accent piece, balanced with a basket on the other side. We also got a happy plan to fill in the end of the bench as a way to zone the entry from the living spaces. The final step was to add in lighting. I decided to install Philips Hue down lights with a motion sensor in the space. When you walk through the door, the lights turn on automatically and then dim themselves after a couple of minutes. This is really handy when we come back home with groceries at night. The final entryway features a cabinet and bench which gives us ample storage for almost anything and everything. Shoes and boots go under the bench and a couple pairs of home sandals and sneakers go under the cabinet. Coats and jackets can be hung inside the cabinet along with bags and tools that I often use. The drawers provide extra storage space for shoes and cleaning supplies as well as mails and bags. The pack rail allows us to hang up frequently used items and the console functions as a drop zone while the rest are purely decorative. Everything has a designated zone which stops clutter building up in the rest of the house. Over the next few months, I'll continue working on our new home with the dining area coming up next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe. I'll also link everything I use in this entryway down in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.